Welcome back. Game four, Payne Gaming versus SG. Payne are currently up two to one. And they have Warlock Pango. I'm not going to lie, William. I'm already favoring them. Based off of this draft. I mean, Warlock, I feel real good about this support right now. He just seems super strong. Pango, the only time we've seen it in this series so far was game two, where SG won. The post had an excellent Pango game, but throughout the qualifiers, most of the teams have been banning Pango away from Tavo because he's an excellent Pango player. But here, SG give it up. In return, they do get Beastmaster, and they do get an Oracle. Apparently, Stan King is set on this Oracle. It's not terribly surprising. It is one of his favorite heroes, so... Remember that play he made mid with the Courier? Yeah, he put the... Fortune's End on the Courier. The Courier flew in. And they got the route that way. Flew over the enemy hero. Very released cool. Fortune's End and did uh, the AoE route. Man, Pain is one game away. But SG is not that far over. I just feel like they needed more playmakers. Like, I think that they, this time around they took the Magnus, but Magnus is like... I, when I watch EG play too, it's like an Empower bot. Yeah. You're just there for like the one-off team fights, but you need heroes that are actively... Trolling the map, like trolling the map, trying to just like get kills. That's what the Ember Spear was very useful for. Um, the Tusk. It seems like kind of okay when you when you are enabling a four position mm -hmm. with the Wind Ranger and yeah. the Leshrac, but they're also not getting farm. They're not getting like a ton of farm as a result, and don't actively impact the game past that. Right. So it seems okay for the landing phase. And then obviously busts up this carry, but it just means that you're just lacking a, a big mid-game presence from your three position, where which is usually the core that you have the most mid-game presence with. As we're probably going to see from this Pango as well as this Beastmaster. Clockwork third pickup for Pain. So, I, I'm guessing they're going to try and catch this Oracle and force uh, Oracle to false promise himself. It also serves as an opening for the Pango to get in there. He can hookshot cog somebody, and you can blink inside of the cogs with the Pango ball. Sometimes you knock the hero out of the cogs, but other times it just ends up being a perma stun. So it just kind of depends. SG are going to get the four position sanking for themselves. So a nice, clean, hard initiator with a good amount of team fight value. Can maybe get to the back lines and stop the warlock from getting off his golem and upheaval. Ten seconds remaining. So both teams have revealed their supports and their offlaner. Pain are finally going to be forced into revealing an actual core. A one or two position that can get counterpicked. But they do have last pick, so I'm guessing they're going to try and save Weeha's hero for last, and they're going to pick up HFN's carry. What do they want? Well, Morphling and Phantom Lancer have been banned away. They can't play those. Not sure if you want to play Spectre into the Beastmaster super early. Beastmaster is pretty good at keeping the uh, the Spectre down. So it's going to be a lot more of an aggressive hero. A Gyrocopter, a hero that we have not seen much of in these qualifiers. I haven't seen him at all, really. Yeah. Most of the time, we saw him with, like, Wisp. Getting given a free Ags is always nice. Mm-hmm. SG. Five seconds remaining. What do you want? I like uh, I like a nice life stealer here. Maybe a life stealer doesn't shut out the pango, but we've seen life stealer versus gyrocopter picked up quite a bit. He ignores the clockwork and the warlock for the most part. Thanks to rage. I also like 
if you really want to dumpster the Pango, like Chaos Knight. Chaos Knight versus Gyro, though. You know, we've been seeing a lot of PA. Mm -hmm. Hasn't looked super successful, though. I saw it in two games. Did, did it do well? Ooh, Huskar versus Gyrocopter. That's a classic right there. That is a classic. Gyrocopter with just a bunch of magic damage. Huskar's going to ignore a lot of it. He does have an Oracle to play behind, so he's got that cheeky little combo where he can get False Promise and Inner Vitality himself. Especially when he's quite low, so he takes all the advantages of being low HP and having high attack speeds, but doesn't have to fear for his life. Pain goes a bunch of magic damage as well for the most part, especially with the way that most players have been building it without building into a javelin, not really focusing on the heart piercer aspect, but more of the rolling ball aspect. And it is he hero that absolutely bullies the hell out of Pango as well. Mm -hmm. So this is Pain. You probably got an aggro, the, the house car, right? Probably. Like, in the early levels, then, you don't let him really use his passive. Yeah. Isn't Pango pretty nice against Husk? It is. Why? Don't you just, like, the hard piercing him and stuff? Yeah, but you don't do any physical damage yourself. Oh, I see. So, maybe if you have, like, some sort of really good Oracle physical damage Huskar. dealer. People are going to make memes in the chat, right? Whenever he armlet toggles? Yes. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, if they weren't going to before, they're definitely now that you mention it, William. I hope they do. I hope it's more creative than it normally is, though. Marana. Well, it's not threatened by clockwork. With the leaps, you don't really have to worry about upheaval at all, either. The only... Uh, I mean, I guess there's the pango blink on you with the ball. That's a bit of a problem, but... SG have just gone in for like a lot of early game team fight. It seems like, it seems that like the first 25, 30 minutes of the game, SG should feel pretty strong. But pain gaming aren't any slouches in that field either, and they may double down on it with their last pickup. Maybe, um, what do you want? You want a physical damage dealer or pure damage to deal with the Oscar? Something that beats Marana in lane. You need to, you need to be able to kill the Oracle more than anything. You need to be able to jump the Oracle before. Okay. You kill the Huskar because it's so similar to like the Wisp concept. Quap does that. Quap beats Marana. Quap has pure damage against Huskar, and she gets into the back line. Hmm. But she's playing against Beastmaster Sanking. Yeah. So that's hard. You could just play the late game. Pick a harder carry. I don't know what. Dusa. Yeah. You want to want Dusa against this? I feel like no. you get bursted. Maybe not. I just mid. Mm. I think you want something a little bit more active. You're gonna be against Marana mid, right? Yeah. Take like Storm or something Yolo. Ah, that's a classic. Tinker! Oh, Tinker's not bad. Yeah, Tinker. Pure damage against Huskar. Yes. Plays the late game. Like, oh, you should be able to win late game with your Tinker lineup. And it gives you split push, which is nice because the rest of Pain just want to fight. They've got uh, a bunch of bunch of heroes that just want to play for pickoffs and team fights. Not bad. Does it win, though? Is it a winning lineup? Blitz Dota. Give me the odds. Uh, I don't know. I kind of... I really like Payne's lineup. I feel like this clockwork is good against at least two of the cores. Like, he just... He's going to be useful against the Huskar if he can trap him in. Like, after the leap or whatever. Um, and he just pops Blade Mail. If he gets a Blade Mail. Yeah, he's going to be nice against Laposa. Good against tanking. 
depends on how Laposa plays. Like if he has a very successful start at top lane, then I could see him controlling this game. And then the Hawk just scouts around for HFN. Yeah. They get really deep wards, take away the tier two area. Uh, then I could see them winning. And for Pain, it just pretty much just depends. Like, does HFN last long enough, where he doesn't die to uh, be able to just like straight up carry the game? Yeah. Because if HFN just gets six slotted and he plays this really safe, and they play around the rock, the Fatal Bonds will still fuck you up. And he's got the the mid matchup is really sick for Tinker, right? Yeah. Like you dumpster Murata pretty hard. I haven't played that one in so long. I've got to after this tournament, I'm I'm gonna grind. Grind all, all the mid matchups. Yeah, like I haven't touched Murana in so long. I've been playing some Murana, some some off lane Murana. It's pretty good, except for the part where your leap has a disgustingly high cooldown at level one, which is normally where you keep it. Yeah. Macro. All right. Well, HFN's already going to give you the memes. Macro Ty. Something for everybody. And they're all going to start tipping. The priest master thanks you. Laposa and Flea keep on tipping each other throughout this whole entire series. Yeah? They must they, like each other. Yeah, it's like a go stay positive. We're still I mean they had a win you're two the games best. before this. No, you're the best. They had to win two games before. Nothing yeah. changed. That's how you should think about it. Right. Just win two games. Make it just yeah. win. You're you've got a Huskar draft. I'm apparently Apparently, both sides are farmed and everything. I mean, I, I personally like SG's lineup a decent amount. But then again, I've I've lost a lot of predictions because I believed in a Tinker lineup, so my, my faith is wavering in Tinker lineups. So maybe that's why. Hmm. I like Huskar lineups. Yeah. Huskar lineups are... Weeha versus Laposa. Oh. Whoa, 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 who's actually winning this fight, though? It looks like Weeha might be able to run him down with a rocket barrage as long as he gets in range. Laposa, though, a healing salve. Maybe he turns around. Nah, they both healed Canceled up. his healing salve. He canceled oh. Laposa's healing salve. But Laposa... No, that was actually just two for two. Laposa was fighting for his life and to even out the bounty runes. So paying a slight early advantage to them because of that. Wards in the same places. Looks like Direside actually placed their ward later, so uh, SG should be able to get the Sentry D ward later on to the game. And that's always value. Experience. The experience you get out of the ward. Oh, so good. Makes playing support a lot more dynamic. Yeah. I feel like that's what Ice Rock keeps trying to do, general direction wise. Reward five position players for having to play five position. Yeah, scaling. Like for, first, he he made the wards cheaper, and then, then he, he made it gold. so the wards. Yeah, you actually get the same amount of gold back, and then they escalated the the ward gold. So now you actually make money off of dewarding, and then he gave experience. Actually, experience was before the, before the escalating gold change, but shield crash to get the range creep. Tavo, making sure he gets the full experience out of lane. They're going to put the Warlock in with him, which is a good way to make sure that Pango doesn't lose this just huge harassment advantage that Huskar almost always has against all offlaners. It does mean the Clockwork is going to be babysitting Weeha's Gyrocopter in the bottom lane against the Beastmaster Oracle, and you said this lane is very important for SG. The post is already off to a pretty good start in CS 7-3. and three. Pain is winning the chat wheel war, though. Mid lane, 8 and 5 compared to the Marana's 5 and 2, and he does have a full creep wave coming his way, so pretty big advantage right now for HFN in the CS department. Double damage on King RD. Thinking about making a play here. Caught by the axes, though. They didn't actually have vision of They had vision of him walking in with the double damage. They didn't have vision of on the high ground. They just dispel that double damage just to make sure it's not a threat with the fortune's end. Le or Tavo, rather. T 
tops, yes, in 13 and 1. He's doing a great job. Because Pango's stats are not the greatest to start the game. It could be difficult to contest, yes, but Huskar also has very bad starting damage, so he actually has uh, a four damage advantage, plus he has the Quelling Blade, so he actually has a... Uh, he should actually have the CS lead. God, he spams that taunt so much. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. And you were correct. Uh, this is completely one-sided. HFN is almost uncontested. I don't know why I really needed to say that I need to play that matchup. <laughs> I yeah, should you know that matchup. Yeah, like I kind of know how changed. Tinker works. <laughs> Marana still has really shitty base damage. She's still a squishy hero playing Tinker's against laser. laser spam. Yeah, laser is a... It's an ability. 130 mana costs. It blinds you for three and a half seconds. He's at 77 damage right now. She's at 64 on 40 yards, Marana. And yeah. obviously there's the harassment advantage, so Marana's had to go back to base. Now, the Huskar is not much of a threat in the first three levels. He just isn't. The Burning Spears level one is very bad damage. It's five damage a second. It's not great. You start getting to level four and five, though, that Burning Spears really starts amping itself up. The Berserker's Blood starts having a better effect as a yeah. result. So this lane may start going better for SG as time goes on. But right now, the Pango and Warlock duo is doing really well for itself. This Bottom lane, the 22 and 5 Beastmaster is trying to keep up, though. Yeah, they're just trying to shut down uh, this Huskar as much as they can. He's still got 20 CS. Weeha and him are pretty equal. Let's Blocked see. out, King RT. Zones them away from one of the bounty runes. Won't be able to get the other, though. So it's going to be a trade off two for two again. Man, this Huskar hero, though. I think he won some games in NA as well. Like, when it's the right game, he just wins each game. Flea is having such a hard time. He just keeps on, like, trying to be a threat on the side, and he just keeps on getting right-clicked by Duster over and over again. That's comes what Warlock in. does. Full HP now, but they don't realize that King RD does have an Invis rune, and as they try and go on the Panko, they do reveal themselves. King RD goes blood. straight for Flea because he has no Burrow Strike, and Tavo will get the last hit. He's already got the Arcane Boots, but now he can have a faster bottle, maybe a faster uh, Javelin if he really wants it, or just a Blink Dagger. That's a really fast Arcane Boots. Yeah. By Tavo. Again, he was owning the CS in the lane. Ooh, bottom lane. Weeha. He may actually die here. Laposa does. Oh, wow. They actually just finished him off with the long range Purifying Flames. And King RD. Well, they do have a way to be able to eat through this one. Laposa has a mango if he wants to try and throw the axes at King RD. He's trying to finish off Stan King right now. Stan King does have the Purifying Flames. King RD drop low. Laposa, where is your axes? You right-clicked him so many times. If you had axed him earlier, King RD was definitely dead from the Purifying Flames. An uncharacteristic mistake from Loposa. Felt like he was, I don't even know if you said greedy, because he would have gotten the kill. Yeah. There was a and lot he of probably would have saved done. his ally, too. Yes. Moonlight Shadow was used. I don't think anything really happened as a result of that. They just saved the Beastmaster. Oh, okay. Well, he thought he was going to die. 4-3-18. HFN is going to have very fast boots to travel if this keeps up. That's why SG probably going to start making some rotations soon. Oh, nice little stack here. They're going to try and contest over this. 
A lot of damage on a King RT. He's already quite low. Weehaw tries to come in from behind, but the magic immunity from Stan King keeps him alive. And Weehaw has a hard time dealing with the right clicks of Lopos's Phase Boots Beastmaster. All of them are low. Flat cannon shots trying to finish up this creep wave. Very important that they get this CS. As the lane was oh. already going not so well, Axis. the Axis almost finished the off. Flames. Long range! Purifying Flames, level 3. That is 270 damage to execute. The Gyrocopter. Duster's going to be caught here in the top lane. Slowed down, but not slow enough. Costa Bile and Flea still unable to get themselves a kill. Arrow from 40 yar. Pops the Invis. This is really all he can do. HFN is dominating this mid matchup. Don't get to see HFN play mid very often. Yeah. It's just pretty much on... Did HFN play the Ember Spirit, or did Weeha play safe lane Ember Spirit? Uh, Can't remember. I mean, Weehaw played Ember mid last game. That's yeah. fine. I just remember there, there were times when they were picking up this Ember Spirit and they would uh, have to put it safe lane a lot. I'm not sure if they switched the lanes as a result. Because the thing is, they can both play Ember Spirit. That's the that's the interesting part about this team. They could both play mid, they could both play safe lane, so they could just effortlessly switch at will. I don't know what Flea's purpose is in this game. Yeah. God, that's the problem with, like, first three and clockwork. It's like, the hero feels really bad when you can't kill cores. It feels really bad. Like, this hero feels amazing when you just have the ability to walk around and kill one or two heroes for free. Uh-huh. Which sounds unbelievable as a concept, but that is what you need to do. You just need, like, one or two heroes that you can just straight up bully. So are you talking about Flea or King RD? Flea. Or, uh, King RD, sorry. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. Flea. Flee last game. King yes. RD this game. This game. King RD is playing the clock. It's just, you, you run around as this clockwork, uh, and you just run around, and you hope that people die to you. Yeah. And the thing was, like, it feels like Sand King is the superior four position. Because he can he can yeah. stun out of your cocks is uh, the reason why, right? Yeah. yeah. When it comes to that man fight, you can't actually go for him. You need to be able to beat the other four position when you play Clockwork, or you need to be able to like pressure some of the cores. I thought he'd do a better job against Beastmaster, but I guess Beastmaster also just hits the cogs really fast. Yeah, and he just farms up as yeah. a result. And then he could just pop uh, one of his guys, you know, one of his dudes. Yeah, just and they'll be with him to call the, the wild, bag. ring him up. Which is why uh, sometimes we we don't often see the Clockwork as often as we used to. Yeah, there was a there was a time period where the hero was just kind of unbelievable, and the heroes that matched up. Uh, that he matched up against, he matched up really well against. But now it, it feels uh, like that impact has been lessened. So, bottom lane went so badly that we uh, had to leave the lane as the Beastmaster got level 6. Uh, just like he did in that Ember Spirit versus Bloodseeker matchup, so it seems like that's kind of a philosophy of his. Yeah. I, I never see this hero lose lanes anymore. Yeah. Beastmaster, he just runs at you. Insane. Just repeatedly axes you. He and knows he, where Tavo is. He very early took that tier one tower. Now Tavo's been the one who's had to kind of sit here in lane. They tried to invade with the gyrocopter. King RD's here with his level six. He's, He's waiting for uh, Tavo to get out. Tavo's got his ulti. He might just pop it from the side. Not sure why he's not ready to rolling thunder. They should have this kill power pretty straight up. Guess he's waiting. I'm not sure for what. Maybe they think there's other heroes here, but they're now uh, gonna go for the hook shot play. Need to be able to get inside Tavo. Oh what's, no! What I, he still has the Rolling Thunder though, the Moonlight Shadow. They have the dust on him, they're gonna roll him over. Sand King is here, he's gonna bounce off the wall, and now the save. They okay. do have the False Promise, maybe they can still do enough damage to be able to finish him off. Oh, the Giant Copter Ultimate's up. gonna drop in on all these heroes. Weehaw's gonna try and finish him all up, and now he's been Lepose stunned up. Can't get the flat cannon shots, Laposa finally dies. Weeha now has to deal with forward ER, but he is hasted right now. Only for a little time longer though, Tavo hitting Flea. Has a bro strike, gets up to the high ground. Tavo might still be able to catch him, though. Or a missile rocket from HFN will actually do the trick. That's Max uh, heat-seeking missile. Easy kill for him, but felt like they could have gone in there a little bit earlier. Yeah, Maybe the clockwork doesn't have to die for that. It allowed it so that he had way more than enough time to just pop his ulti, keep the pango out. They did successfully bait a good team fight for themselves, oh, though. Tavo. Three Careful. for one exchange. Tafu does not get hit by that arrow. 40 R. Normally, normally. You know what my favorite part about Tafu is? Huh? No matter what, like win, lose, he's spamming. Yeah, he's lines. chat wheeling or, or tipping. I cannot respect you if you only chat wheel when you're ahead. Yeah. I honestly, I just can't. 
pain VP, they do that shit ahead, behind, Doesn't close matter. game, yeah. they're doing it. Has anyone took the time to uh, to decipher oh. when, what chat wheel is spammed when for some of these players? No, I don't think so. I, this like, is does the, Tavo the spam something meta. else when he's he's behind? I think they just like the normal in. Normal in, normal in. Just as a I mean, they also like the, the Chinese ones, which are... Hinoa! Yeah. That one's... There's some godlike ones. Godlike wasn't the word I would have used. But. He's going to go for the Necronomicon build, uh, as is kind of been normal for SA. Arrow. This medallion. Oh, that's not going to land on King RT. He does not have a hook shot out of this one. He's going to have to get some really godly cogs. Tries to trap 40R in instead. 40R can just leap out, though. The golem was dropped. Tavo. They're going to try and roll Tavo into 40R. He Tavo. has. He has one more leap up, but he's going to be able to catch him anyway. He knew exactly where he wanted to go. And Stan King is going to be the next target here. Stan King does have False Promise, so he'll be okay. Laposa still has his ulti, too. Looks like he's rowing for it. Comes to be late. Okay, oh, Stan King okay. just died. Stan King just... Stan Flea coming in from behind. Two-man pro strike, but he dies to the March of Machines. He couldn't get the roar off. The epicenter is not going to catch the Tinker. It may kill what the, world? the Warlock, but Warlock killed Flea. It looks like Flea made the call that he was behind the Tinker and he wanted to sandwich them. Friends, March is very strong. The only way that it kills you is if you stand in it. <laughs> To be fair, if he got off the roar, they probably would have killed Tinker too. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> you're not wrong, but I feel like you're not right. <laughs> it's just one of those things. Well, Laposa definitely wasn't right. right Radiant top. scan on mid reveals that Laposa is here. Oh, King Tavo. RT searching for a pickoff. Almost got doinked by that arrow. Almost has the Blink Dagger for him. Oh, this game is so stressful. So he went all... Uh, so he went Soul Ring over Bottle. Yes. Which has been Tavo's go-to build. I like it. Yeah? You just like the stats that Soul Ring gives you? Yeah. It helps. It's good regen, too. HP regen is always underrated. Even two. Big smoke up. Is this a killing play? I hope it is. Roshan would be suicide. Get to Clockwork. Okay, they might oh, actually. Oh, they might catch the Tinker. This is the play. Moonlight Shadow. No, oh, no! Get, get, get to the high ground. They got him. They got him. They got him. They got him. Very Ooh, dead. That he scared is super me. Dead. I, I don't even care. Meanwhile, okay. uh oh. They found 40R. Ron is dead. He got caught by the Tavo ball. Oh, this game is so fun. It is stressful. I just want people to okay. kill each other. They need Costa Bile to go in first and be a target. Yes. If that happens and they get a good false promise on him, they this fight out. is easy. And that's why out. they're just paints out. Yeah, they're full out. Everyone flees. I love the death. People need to be punished. Good push onto the mid lane will punish that tier 1 tower. If they don't kill the Tinker there, like they don't find anything, that's pretty massive. Yeah. They just stopped him before uh, the Blink Dagger too. That's a sick Blink timing. And it kind of resets their game. Oh, wow. A what? bit, but Tinker was still like he's still ahead even after that death, right? He's still gonna get his blink dagger here off of this creep wave. A 17 minute bots blink. Tinker, that is that sounds super scary. Okay, 40R leads forward to try and get more damage on this tier one. Not enough to put it into deny range, just enough that maybe he can finish it off next push. And very important to try and finish off these uh, towers early against the Tinker. Weeha! Going to be jumped on by the Huskar. Hook shot in. Now the Golem drop. There's going to be that False Promise on Acosta Bile. He's going to be okay, but he can't get a kill either. In fact, they need to heal him up because now the Tinker's here. The is going to be chased down by King RT. Plink, plink, plink. Goes to the battery salt. Running uh -oh. over Tavo. Managed to get a good roll in. That is definitely not a macro armlet for sure as our poor Huskar dies as he's immediately rolled over with God, the that, armlet down. That rocket hits for more than I expected to. Like, it looked like Stan oh, has almost a quarter of his health and he just dies. Yeah. Oh. And HFN sees you. got Flea. TP's out. He'll be okay. He's gone. The rest of his team is not okay, though. This is a Huskar strat. 
you're still you have opportunity still to to re up. Like getting a Roshan will change that. Just the team fight for them seems kind of lackluster again. They needed Flea there. Yeah. But Flea feels like he needs his blink dagger before he can get in. They've got. Uh, oh, never mind. I misread that. Clockwork is going to start building into the blade mail. I'm not sure if blade mail or spirit vessel is better for this game. The spirit vessel is really value against Oracle and Huskar lineups. They did manage to take that tier one mid at some point. I must have missed that. Forty R took it. Is this hero just amazing? Tinker? No. Um. What is it? Uh, Pango? I think Grant was saying the other day. He was like, "That hero is just incredible." Yeah. He's gonna have Vanguard too. So now he's gonna be a uh, super tanky beast. Successful scan on the Moonlight Shadow. Good read. Beastmaster is going to cut over into mid lane immediately, though. They have a support behind each of the cores, though. And Tinker's just doing his business. So Weeha is able to take that mid tier one tower, no problem. King RT is going to be spotted. They're going to be able to get a Primal Roar into Arrow. Yes. And he is dead. So Laposa still managed to get a pick off. Maybe not the core kill he was hoping for, but it's something. Oh, that's interesting. Lopos is actually going back for a Shadow Blade rather than finishing up his Necrobook farm. But he may not get either one of those. It's going to be caught by Weeha in the act of farming up the neutrals. Now 40R the comes in, hits. misses the arrow, though. And now the rocket actually came for a change target, went for 40R, oh. and that might save Weeha's life, except for the fact that he has a double damage. 40R needs to be able to leap away, bottle up, stay ahead of this Tinker. Don't get spotted by him. Hide in the trees. TP out. HFN's going to spot him. The damage. Oh, is it going to be fast enough? No! Barely Very gets nice. away. Super well done. I want a game five, so... And that was space for SG to be able to take this tier one tower at the top lane. So that was a win on both sides. They Absolutely. killed the gyro, and they got a tier one. Some necessary farm Oof. for our Huskar. Give me that game five to go to TI. That is what everyone's hoping for right now. Even Pain fans, let's be real. If you're a Pain fan, no, I think you're, you're probably a Brazil fan. If you're a true Pain fan, you don't want a game five. <laughs> You can't say that. Come on, uh, if you've been a Pain fan for a while, you're probably a fan of 40R as well. You're like, ah, oh, I used to cheer for that guy. Cap, I'm a huge fan of the San Antonio Spurs. Okay, I've got a Kawhi Leonard jersey. Uh -huh. If and when Kawhi Leonard leaves the Spurs, that man <laughs> that man's is dead to me. He's dead to you? He is straight up dead to me. Do not speak his name around me. <laughs> Goes to be like, going to be caught in the act of farming. Oh, no. SG, what are you doing? You can't leave your Huskar alone. Or was he just out of position because no one was near him? That Both. Can he farm this triangle? The triangle of farm? The triangle. Why isn't he at the triangle? He's got his Heaven's Halberd. It's, the disarm isn't even effective this game. Not really. Just something to get. Tavo, you going to go for it? Yeah, I feel it. You feeling it? Nah. Tavo's chilling. I would have gone for it. Just gonna try and get the chain stun off of the wall. Man, if you're 4 DR right now, you don't feel good. Yeah, you don't feel great. He's gonna try. He needs a Maelstrom because he needs to be able to get a farming item plus damage out during laser. But he also needs BKB because he's a super squishy hero. What are you going to do about top, SG? Leave it. Take a tier two of your own. But then you're leaving your tier three exposed to a Tinker lineup. That never feels good. A Tinker with now an Aghanim Scepter. So he is one of the big high ground defenders. If he actually gets an Aether Lens as well, it is so tough to push into that bouncing laser. They're smoked up right now. Want to try to get a pick and go into Roshan? Uh, what is that? Yeah, Huskar lineup that hasn't managed to take Roshan 22 minutes. Oh, they want minutes. Roshan so badly. They're going to invis up. Scout first with the Hawk. Moonlight Shadow. Pushing in. They're going to give vision of King RT first. Immediately, Cogs push back, but they're still going to be able to jump onto him. Oh, the Pango Ball! It bounced off of the Cogs. It will still nail Laposa.
combo. Warlock, He's gonna try and hit him one more time. The Moonlight Shadow is helping to hide they him. Oracle HFN. does end up going in the top lane, though. HFN in some trouble. Opposa managed to get away from the March of the Machines, doesn't die, and they killed the Tinker. Now Tavo has to swashbuckle and shield crash his way out of this one. Does manage to blink away. Net an extra ultimate from Costa Bile. Nets another kill. Managed to jump onto Duster. A massive team fight win for SG, and into the Roshan pit they go. Very well done by Flea. He found the, oh, his spot oh, onto the Tinker. Laposa. Laposa. Laposa! You, you greedy! <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, man. All right, Costa Bile almost died to Roshan. Okay, that might alone might just stop the Roche. That is, that is upsetting. That was fantastic by Flea, though. He finds the angle onto the Tinker, gets on top of him with the ult, makes it so that he can't move. The Tinker didn't get to do Tinker things in that fight was the uh, gist of it. 40R now has a BKB. I like this item. I think he realizes the magic damage. All of that nonsense is the issue. Like, you look at Weeha's build. This guy is heavily relying on the Rocket Barrage and his call down. Well, yeah. now you can take that away from him. They're gonna catch. Arrow onto King RD as he was trying to go for the D ward. Looks like he got the ward, but loses his life. Worth. More space for HFN. So if you're Tavo, I'm pretty sure you've gotten all the farm you really necessarily need in this game. He can play to try and protect his other cores. Getting Eul's would be nice, but... Roshan will end up dying anyway to SG. They'll pick up the Aegis for Huskar, who's now level 15. Hasn't picked up his second talent yet. Which one do you go for, Blitz Dota? Which one? Huskars? Burning Spears, DPS, or Lifesteal? <sighs> How useful is the Lifesteal? Again, I will uh, point to the fact that you have an Oracle on your team. He took the Lifesteal. My man took the Lifesteal. Mm. Okay. Uh, acceptable. How much more would the 10 be? That'd be two levels of Burning Spear. Yeah. Versus a Mask of Death. Which later turns into pure damage if you get the, uh, yeah, which yeah. most people do. Versus a mask of death, or a morbid mask, or whatever. A morbid mask and a half. Hmm. That's how I think about talents. I don't know why. I, I mean, I think it's a good way to think about it. About if you can replace a talent with an item. It's like whenever I see the 15% magic resistance ones, I get so upset. Yeah. Oh, roll out Laposa goes for the pickoff onto the Tinker. A big win, but there was Tavo always guarding this Tinker. He's been sticking around for a while now, and we'll make sure Laposa is unable to get that kill. The squad is rolled up. Yeah, they they know they know how this game is won and lost. It is all through their Tinker, so they are going to put a little bit more effort into protecting him than they did previously. I'm trying to go for the Aetherlands. They dropped the rock for that too, man. Oh, they caught him with the Yule Scepter. Marana does have another leap. Heat-seeking missiles are coming in. Only one of them's going to hit him, though. He's going to activate the Shrine, close to Bile. You don't have your BKB. Yeah, he has his Aegis, but... Uh, whoa there, Tavo. You scared me. HFN very quickly. Going for the push out. He's going to try and get that Aether Lens. But even if he does have Ags and Aether Lens, the BKB timing for SG on both their Marana as well as their Huskar can allow them to run over this lineup. 40R oh, is going to be Marana. spotted here. Tavo's going to be able to run into him with a hook this? shot in as well. The BKB activated. TP out. Can they get the physical damage in? Oh, Flea just makes sure that there's no way that Tinker can get off more attacks on that Marana. That was close to the issue. Was there any Pango Ball angle that he could have taken? Uh, well, he hit him once, and then the was BKB went off. I don't think... When you're going this direction, I don't think there is. Like, you literally have to circle, and that's too hard. Circling with the ball is, like, the least efficient play. But sometimes that's the only play you have. Bonk. Flea. 
Really desperately trying to catch that Tinker. Does at least push him away from the Tier 2, but the March of the Machine spam has already done its work and killed the Creep Wave. They are losing their Tier 1 at bottom lane to Tavo right now. But again, just like in the, the previous games, SG, uh, it seems like a strong philosophy as a team that they never want to back up in these situations. They always want to keep pressing forward. They want to make sure that if there is a team fight, it's going to be on Payne's side of the map. So they have an opportunity to go high ground. That's why they're, they're going to four-man smoke up behind Costa Bile. I wonder how surprising the smoke the will three. be when they see the Huskar just go high ground. Yeah, probably not very. They get a ward down. That's going to be spotted already by the sentry. They knew exactly what this play was. Don't want to lose this Aegis too early. This was not disguised at all. This was more just oh. like, we're hoping you go on... They have the Hawk Vision, though. Flea, he's ready to blink in and go for a play. They actually got spotted now. Smoke is worn out. Still, though, they got a lot of damage on that Tier 3. Hook shot in. Close to Beeline. Going to be pushed back and rolled over. That is going to be his Aegis. He does have a BKB. And they're not going to be able to get an instant stun set up. So Close to Beeline is just going to roll right back in. Interesting. They don't have the ping gold now. Yeah. Or the Clockwork Hook shot. But that might be enough to deter. Uh, I think if you're close to Bile, you want this tier 3 really badly. He's going to try for it. Jumps on King RT with the cogs out. Blade Mail is activated, but he does have the False Promise. He'll try and heal off of that with the Inner Vitality. Should be able to kill the Clockwork, get the tier 3, and heal up to full. Weeha, do not expect that Huskar to be low. He will not. Heals up to a whole 2300 HP. That now opens up the shrines, so as she can take that all the way out. But Pain are going to go for the contest here. Even though they don't have a clockwork, they do have the Warlock Golem. Moonlight Shadow is going to be popped here. Laposa hiding in the trees, trying to set up an initiation. Left hand side, they do manage to jump on Tavo. Arrow's not going to land on Tavo. Does manage to get away with the swashbuckle. Laposa bounces back. Weeha scared him away with the call down. And they're still going to try and take this shrine with Costa Bile on the front lines. They're still moving forward for it as Tavo trying to save this. They're going to activate the shrine now with Tavo. Take away the Necronomicon. Nice two-man pro strike. 40 is going to try and jump in with the magic the damage. Rock. They managed to blow up the Gyrocopter. The, the Rock comes in, but the damage is already done. SG have won this fight, it looks like, and they're going to try and push forward with 40 r They've caught HFN. Flea managed to catch him with the Yule Scepter. 40 r gets more damage onto him, but he's only at half HP. Star Storm comes down and finishes him off. Now Flea will die, but it was well worth it as 40 r helps to get the kill onto the Tinker. A critical kill as long as he doesn't die, but he doesn't have a leap, so he will die as well. That was the buyback, though, from Weeha. Flea is doing such a good job of finding that Tinker. Like, he knows in his in this game, it doesn't really matter the rest of the team fight. He can separate away because he knows that the Tinker is the one that's going to finish off everybody. So he's waiting. He's being very patient, just trying to find HFN, and he's done so in both the major team fights. That's been the difference maker so far. And Duster, even with, like, the four-man golem into, uh, into Fatal Bonds, there's just not enough damage because the Tinker's not pumping out anything there. Melee Rax Gone. will die. Costa Bile does have a BKB, so he's going to swap in his TP. BKB TP out if necessary, but well, King RT is thinking about it. He can't TP out until the hook shot is down. That's also why King RT isn't throwing. He throws it now, trying to execute the Huskar real quickly. The False Promise goes down. King RT, he is dead, but Costa Bile may be drawn into a bad team fight. We'll see. King RT is going to take out for the Burning Spears. Costa Bile does heal quite a bit. HFN with a pure damage long. is going to try and keep this laser on top of Costa Bile at all costs, and they will be able to take him out alongside the Oracle. He popped the BKB and had no out after that. Definitely stayed way too long. I thought his play right there was just a BKB and TP out. As soon as the hook shot was used? Yeah. Absolutely. There's nothing that's going to stop you at that point. You know that the rock is on cooldown. Your life is not worth the trade there. No. And as you saw, like the Oracle's not going to ditch you in that position. He's going to try to stay to save you. So it ends up just being more or less a team wipe. And it makes Weeha's buyback sort of worthwhile. Now he's pretty close to his butterfly. You're going to fast approach a time period where Weeha with two more items could actually just fight. 40R does find Duster inside the jungle. And now they've got the mana break as well on 40R for some extra damage. Good game on our hands. So you do get the racks, but you lose a bunch of heroes for it. As well as some objectives. Tier 2. Yep. 
gets uh, almost taken. It's actually going to be Deny for Stan King. I, I really like the point that you brought up, though, that SG doesn't just... A lot of teams, I think, would just back from that position. Mm -hmm. But SG makes those hard reads like, guys, we, we're not going to like split up. I think oftentimes they get punished too much for that, for just splitting up and trying to reset there. Yeah. And so they just stuck together. They stuck to the guns. They went for the racks. I think those are the calls that Stan King has brought to the team. Yeah. Right? Where it's he's just like... Playing to win. Yeah. He's like, guys, don't worry about the fact that creeps are hitting our huts inside the base. Like, don't worry about the fact they're trying to take a tier one right now. We stay on the offensive because, well, they we don't have, have better late game. Yeah. You got to close out the game. Wait, what? Oh, you went an E-Blade. Hmm. Well, that is not a butterfly. I guess it's his answer to the Huskar. Yeah. He at least can F-Blade himself. Huh. I would have thought Butterfly would have been better. I have seen that before. I can't remember who did it, though. Is it with BKB? Is it? Isn't it just Butterfly? I... Look, I'm not here to judge. These guys are in a really stressful that, position. That is exactly your job as an analyst. You're I'm here to here judge. I'm just here to try to explain why they're doing what <laughs> they're doing. Weeha is a thousand times better... So, I would imagine that it's just for the Huskar counter, and you still get a high amount of agi. Yes, of you do. Okay. So this I think you actually get more agi out of this. Thing. Oh, nice two-man pro strike Ooh, from King Flea. Gone. The roll-in from Tavo. They That's do nice have run. a really nice golem with the Warlock golem bonds as well. Tavo's that is so much in. damage. They do have Kosa Bile. He managed to save him with the False Promise. He's getting the damage onto Weeha. Should be able to finish him off. The Ethereum the Blade! The save goes down. Can he survive? Kosa Bile spotted HFN though. HFN TP's back just in time. He will live. Kosa Bile survives as well thanks to the False Promise heal. Tavo though is stuck in no man's land. He's going to try and swashbuckle Austin. his way out of this one. Austin, it saved him. It saved his life. That's I why. That's why you don't judge. You just try to. Ex you understand. You try to understand. I mean, if he dodged a quarter of those hits, it also would have saved try him. You just try to understand. He would have had higher movement you speed with Flutter as well. You just try to understand. <laughs> it paid off instantly, and that yeah. is the narrative that we will go for. <laughs> all right. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. You don't know if he would have lived or died with the butterfly, but I know right there. <laughs> that guy's alive right now. Dude, th there, he took so many right clicks to the face. I know before right that now. There is definitely, the he only definitely would have been There's not invaded. a lot that I know. And I can't go back in time. But <laughs> I do know that Weeha is alive because of that E-Blade. <laughs> All right, sounds good. That I can guarantee tell you. <sighs> well, MKB is now up on Costa Bile, so. Butterfly would have been real poop now. So it looks even better. Oh no. Are you saying oh no to MKB on, on Huskar? Yeah. See? He already countered that. Yeah. yeah. That the MKB was coming. Bro strike down the hill. Oh, oh Yules! Yules is himself, has blink dagger, but there's gonna be the ball that instantly hits him. Nido. Alright. So what do we what what are, what's our situation like? That we still have Aegis on Costa Vila. You're still an Oracle. Uh huh. These are the important, relevant. This is a Tinker who's about to finish up Scythe. It's a big power spike. And Tavo's going to try and start building some damage. He's going to go for a Maelstrom now. Though I think he should go MKP, right? For the pure damage against Huskar. But Maelstrom's really good at being able to push out waves. Because you get guaranteed. Like, you swashbuckle and it instantly kills any creep wave. BKB is the next item on the Beastmaster. King Tekka could have learned from that. <laughs> Laposa knows. Mjolnir next for 40 R. Costa Bile is going to take the next tower. He's going to get a... Do you get Heart or Satanic? Because they're both af effectively... They're kind of the same, thanks to False Promise. Yeah. Because if you take False Promise, then your Heart will start regening because you're taking no damage. Uh. 
I think I like. I did, I like heart. Heart. <laughs> I, I mean, because if it's the same thing, wouldn't you rather just go for the item that one gives you more strength, and two, it doesn't require you to have mana or t or to activate it, right? Yeah, but satanic gives you damage. Yeah, that's true. Heart gives you damage. They both give you damage. <laughs> I like how you just operate in vague. It gives you damage, not not specific amounts, you know. You get some, and in another one you <laughs> get some. You get some here. This one gives oh. you some. The other Hook one gives you in. lots. King RD pushes them into the base, but he just hops over the sure. cogs and kills King RD. Now, Goodbye, sir. he does have an Aegis, but pretty sure Stan King is definitely healing him. Never oh. mind. He did not have inner vitality going. He didn't have the mana going. Tavo popping the old BKB? Early. No, he doesn't get it off in time. Tavo, can he get the chain stun? No, BKB activated by Costa Bile. He's going to try and go for Weeha, but the BKB is on him. So Costa, Costa Bile, Bile just finished up that tier 3. Tries to run out, but they have a heal slow. Okay, they, they do have four staffs. All right, so King RD, you see the game plan now. He is suiciding so that he can trade his life for the Aegis. And it's kind of worth it, honestly. I mean, it should be for just the false promise, but Costa Bile didn't have mana for Inner yeah, yeah. Vitality. So. Oh, he went Satanic. Damn it. I was right. Come on, dude. One gives you damage. <laughs> <laughs> one does, satanic one does give you 75 damage. He would have lived. Oh. I mean, he would have lived with heart, too. <laughs> it's percentage-based heal that is doubled. My man needs some some mana. Somebody needs to hook him up with some arcane boots or something. 40R, he's actually going to pop his BKB and turn and fight. The rest of his team is coming in fast. Flea, he's been spotted by the sentry on the ground. Flea's going to jump to the back line. Immediately goes for the Tinker. The arrow nails Duster. Instead of the Tinker, though, Flea's going to try and keep the damage on him. Couldn't quite do it. Meanwhile, the ball rolling around in this little corner. It's causing some serious havoc. 40R is probably going to die as a result. Stanking looks like he's also dead, but Costa Bile managed to finish off the Gyrocopter. Jumps forward onto Duster. Gets him. The Warlock Golems are a threat, though, and Costa Bile is going to deal with that with the help of 40R first. Right. Arrow comes out. Oh, it, it nails him. King RD. Lincoln's put onto him, but the physical damage will still overwhelm him. Costa Bile drops a little low, though. I'm going to be 100% honest. The butterfly would have been a lot better right there. Yeah, it would have. <laughs> the butterfly would have been a million times better. Actually, no, he's got MKB, so you know what? It doesn't matter. That's true. Nothing matters. It wouldn't have been better. Maybe that 25% chance. Him. Who knows? Costa Bile, thanks to the Satanic, heals up to full and goes for the Tier 3 next. Buyback by Dust has some problems with lasers, though, and almost dies. Okay, all they have to do is kind of chase him out. Just be careful of the. Oh! <laughs> all right, that, that was just good play from Duster, right? Yeah. My dude's not scripting. That's what we know for <laughs> sure. <laughs> Laposa, Heart Piercer, run away, trying to get a blink off Primal Roar instead onto the Warlock, but he is uh, looking look. No. I've never been more certain that someone is not scripting. <laughs> He's dead. He's finally dead. Uh, Range Rax got taken to the top lane, though, in the meanwhile. Worth. Oh, man. Yeah, that is uh, that is two times now that Costa Bile so what I thought has shown that he is a fair play player. Mm -hmm. Definitely proved it right there. <laughs> <laughs> He's not one of the guys that uh, Knoxville snitched on. No, <laughs> 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 they're almost complete for 4DR. Uh, Guardian Creeves now for the Pango and did go for the Swashbuckle cooldown, which is not terribly surprising since he went for the Maelstrom. So he's going to try and become more of a damage healer himself. And they, they need that damage against this Huskar. Whoa, HFN died, but at the same time, they're going to go for this pick off onto Flea. Has a BKB, though. Burrow strikes through the cogs, and they don't have a way to be able to keep damage on him. So he gets back, activates the Shrine. Yule Scepter into an arrow. What? This time, but we must still get the helicopter in the back line. What are you doing, We? Every other person on your team evaded that. Flea is going to be able to hit the Burrow Strike onto the Pango, trying to slow him down, see if 40 yard can catch up. King RD in a side, 
area and does manage to TP out. Yo. What happened to HFN? Did you see that? Uh, no. He also, just, he MKP is not pure anymore. Oh, that's right. That's right. I forgot. It's magic I held damage. you to a higher standard, Austin. You mean you read Twitch chat or something? Of course. <laughs> 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 I never know. Apologies. Any that's on me. It's, it's hard to keep up with the game changes, you know. You know, I, you know what? I specifically didn't call that so many times in my games mm -hmm. for these qualifiers. I was like, no, don't say that. It's not pure oh, damage. And then that. I did it here. BKB's popped by Weeha early to get some D wards going. He did get those D wards. He's going to get the uh, Hobbard for Costa Bile. That'd be very useful as they're going to go in for the racks. Tavo trying to clear up some of these. He's already prepped the Maelstrom. Probably just anticipating Hook a shot onto the Huskar again. Activates the blade mail, just suiciding in. Tavo's going to try and go for the back line. Doesn't hit Laposa. Doesn't hit anybody because he's lost vision thanks to the Moonlight Tavo. Shadow. They do still have Costa Bile quite low, but there goes the False Promise. That was the person he was trying to find. Was the Oracle for staff away? Weha trying to get back with a blink dagger forward from Costa Bile. Executes Weha. 40R trying to get out. Does manage to blink himself away while Tavo's nailed oh by the boy. arrow. Ethereal Blade actually saves him a little bit. Pango might be able to get away as a result, but Costa Bile is hunting down hero after hero. Tavo actually went back in, finished off the Marana, and still lives. He has a swashbuckle too, might be able to catch Laposa, dropped a little low by the Oracle, might be executed. Yes, he does go down, but Weeha cleans up the Oracle. Costa Bile is getting kited around, tries to blink himself out of the base, but now the Tinker is on Can the hunt. Get him? Flea, he needs to hit the Flea big epicenter. He's going to go in, tries to get HF in, but he blinks away first. Duster's gone. Duster is dead. The Golem drops. They can still catch Costa Bile. But he actually turns around, activates the Satanic, and will heal up the full off of the Golem. Ooh. But now King RD, hook shot, stalling him up, burned him out of mana. But they can't really get there. They have to push out their waves. At least they defended their melee racks, though. That did not fall. That was costly, though. And they're having such a hard time dealing with this Huskar. Yeah. This Huskar just doesn't die. Also, Satanic costs no mana. Yeah. I don't know if you said that or not. Now yeah, I'm, yeah, now I'm yeah. doubting everything you said. <laughs> uh, I said mana and then I it r corrected myself with cooldown. Okay, okay. Oh, Coast Spiele may still die. He is he is alone. He's got BKB. He is alone in the wilderness. Can you just BKB and fight everyone? BKB, Satanic. Yeah, I mean, he has to kill everyone Wait. here. Activates the uh, blade mail now. Trying yeah, to go good. for Weeha next. Ethereal Blade buys a little that bit blink. of time. Now the Disarm is going to come out. HFN can just keep the, the laser on him constantly. And Costa Bile won't be able oh. to do anything. They train out the clockwork. Now the jump forward. Francis does have multiple ways to be able to stop HFN from getting out. Has the four staff and the Yules. Burrow Strike coming up in a second. Trying to go for that one hit. HFN oh, unable to blink it himself him. away. Flea has the Burrow Strike coming up in a second. Laposa cuts down the trees to make sure the Burrow Strike lands no on the HFN. No buyback on HFN. Dead There's for two the minutes. Winner. They immediately buy back back on the Huskar to go for this Roshan. You could also just end the game. Uh, I guess you I do think the Roshan both, right? Quick. Yeah, yeah. There's no Tinker for 100. Oh, we're going to a game five, boys. Hype. Mjolnir for the p -p Pango. Give the Aegis to Costa Bile, or does he not need it? He doesn't need it. 40 yards is going to take it instead. He's going to take... Okay, no. He's going to get the Refresher over to Sand King. So that way, Flea, he can blink in four Staff Yules, the oh, Tinker, man. or whoever he wants. And then 70 can, seconds without your Tinker. You were having a hard time killing him when he had... Tavo's going to be target Ethereum Blade. Saves him. He does get back to the base. Satanic was activated by Costa Bile here. And now he's going to be in trouble as the ball right on top of him. He gets the False Promise safe, but they won't be able to get any damage in. He needs to be able to heal out from this one, but I'm not sure he's going to be able to do enough. Let's see if the damage is going to be enough as the False Promise he's fades. He's very dead. What? But SG do manage to finish up one lane of ranks, going for the last one. Tavo in there against 40R. 40R does have the Aegis. Tavo is still alive. Finally he's trying dies. to get close to the rock. He managed to get the rock down and does manage to execute the Marana. He's going to come back with the Aegis, though. Primal Roar. Arctic King RD has the blade mail out, though. Laposa was unable to go for that kill, and 4DR could not finish off that last lane of Rax. He's going to give up on it. Tavo's back. Hits him with the missile. He's going to be able to lock down 4DR. He should die here. Managed to get the cheese off just in time. Turning and fighting against Tavo, but there's so many allies, he can't kill them all, they and he hold. will die to Weeha. Double kill for him. SG do not manage to get the Megas. They will not end the game, and you could see the lines being drawn down mid. Pain. They want to try and end this series with a game for win.
win with an all-in push into the dire base. Oh my god, now the Huskar doesn't have buyback for 70 seconds. They don't have golems. Duster's dead for some time, but they didn't get mega creeped. And that was the big save there. I do agree with the, the game-winning play from the Huskar, but he got so far away from the rest of his team. Yeah. Really overestimated how tanky he was. Everybody from the side of Pain just started queuing up blade mails. They he have blade mail save that. They do have the refresher on the Sand King for the He's got buyback center. Too. He's gonna have to use these really smart. Pain pushing in, finally getting onto the side of SG. What a way th if they actually win this game. Flea gonna be the man to watch. There is no tier two, so Pain can just keep going this entire time. There's only 38 seconds though. That's all you have to last if you're SG. You might not have quite enough time. Flea, not gonna be caught. Oh, maybe he will. Four staffed away from the ball, but hit by the hook shot. Now BKB activated first though. Now the jump forward with Primal Rover, the buyback on the broad. They need to be able to focus down the gyrocopter and they got him. He's already dead. Tavo. Arrow on the Tavo. He's gonna die as well. The back line. Look for HFN. Flea stay on top of him. Buster Refresher gets the Yules. Now he can get the Pearl Strike on top of it. HFN is locked down. He does not have buyback. They can finish him off here. Now and Francis fine. Lee does it. He wins the game for SG, as I don't believe Pain Gaming will be able to hold with only two supports left and no buybacks on their cores. Man, they managed to save it right back. The Huskar alive, healthy, right, willing to fight. No buyback on any of these three cores. It'll be the two supports that'll have to make this impossible hold. There's just no way, right? And you almost have the level 25 on the Warlock, but <laughs> there's. I just don't think this one is... It just seems unfeasible. Yeah, this one's not doable. Blade yeah. Mail activated for the war. All right. Let's go. Warlock's ready to suicide in. He is the ultimate death machine now. Fatal Ponds. Golem. Go in. Suicide with Blade Mail. Here we go. Gets off the Golem. They managed to try and jump forward. They already hit up the clockwork. He's dead. The Warlock's gone before the Blade Mail was even activated. And Costa Bile's not really feeling threatened by these Golems whatsoever. Buyback now from Duster. Round two of his suicide attempt. He's going to upheaval them first. King RT is going to be targeted. They're going to be able to ring him down with the Primal War. He does not have buybacks, so now it's up to Duster. Activates the Blade Mail. Dies with the Golem out, but they've already called the GG. They Game know five. Duster couldn't do it by himself. Game 5, Ooh, everybody! We did it! Pain versus SG is going to the last and final game of the series to see who will head to oh Vancouver, God. beautiful British Columbia, to head to the International. You have had every opportunity now. You can't complain. It gets to a game five. That's where legends are born. Weeha has been in this position once before. He mm -hmm. made it with DC. No second chances around. No one's going to discover any weird shenanigans. Definitely not macros in this game. <laughs> so if you're going to win, you're going to have to do it the old-fashioned way. It's a best of one now. Costa Bile, Huskar, 40-yard, great recovery in the Marana. Flea. Hugely important yes. in this game. Picked off HFN's Tinker multiple times, including that game-ending play with the Refresher Shard. The two times that he found them, uh, once in the top area and once again by, you know, the ward under the shrine. Mm -hmm. When he found them in those two fights, that saved the game for them. Like, the fight, was, the games were looking a little bit rough, but being able to nab him both times there was absolutely incredible. All right. We need to take a break because this game will climax in the ultimate way. Ooh, game five. Game five. You gotta Series. love it. Love to see it. It's coming up, guys. Stick around.